morning, everyone. My name is Jessica Biello, and welcome to my capstone presentation. During the course of capstone, I've been down the life skills room, working on my internship and planning my lesson to teach. And my, the title of my presentation is Living and Gaining Life Skills. Capstone consists of the four P's. It starts off with a proposal, your research paper, your product, and a presentation. Now your proposal is your initial idea of what you want to work on all year, and it can be either denied or approved by the capstone committee. My original idea for my capstone presentation was to compare a student in a life skills classroom with a student in, a, in either AP, honors, or level two classes, and see how their schedules flow with each other, what they do after school, how pretty much how their day-to-day -day activities run and that was unfortunately shot down and I instead worked on watching how Ms. Villarda teaches her students and planned a lesson for myself to teach. Now one big component of Capstone is your 11 page research paper and before doing and working in the life school classroom I had to know who's included the different teaching methods used by the teacher and their life after high school. To start off, I need to know who's included. It mainly are students with moderate to severe disabilities, such as learning disabilities, autism, Asperger's, Down syndrome, or their IQ is 50 or below, with the average being 100. Now, I just want to point out what life skills are exactly. They are broken up into personal or social skills. Now, a personal skill is learned and can be used in situations after being learned for the first time. So, an example of that would be teamwork or time management. And a personal skill I actually sat in on was they made eggs, and now that they made scrambled and hard boiled eggs, now they can go out, like when they're home, they can make them again for themselves since they learned it once. And a social skill is learned through communicating with others. And an example that they worked a lot on was was the talking on the telephone. So one activity we did was they pretended to call like their friend, ask if they wanted to hang out, and one student would be obviously the caller, and one person would be the person who answered the phone. And there are also meaningful skills that can prepare them for the future, such, in other words, skills that can be learned later on in life, such as writing letters, counting money, learn, reading the newspaper, talking on the cell phone, skills like that. And there are skill, and skills that are mainly focused on are in the fields of English, writing, and math. And they spend a lot of time in the life skills room and their goals and objectives are specified from their IEP, which is the Individualized Education Plan, and other skill, skills that can be to, need, used through the IEP are like washing dishes, doing laundry, folding laundry, cooking. So in other words, all these skills are skills that we, in other words, take for granted. The different teaching methods, there's one-on-one -on -one teaching, which I, after getting comfortable with all the students, I actually did a lot of, such as the egg activity, I cooked eggs with two of the students, the telephone activity, and there's small groups, and then there's community-based instruction, which is broken down into three components of video technology, the general case instruction, and the community referred instruction and simulation, which, their field trips is based on all that. So after they, for example, after they learned unit price, they went down to Rite Aid and they compared the price of like Listerine mouthwash with Rite Aid mouthwash to see which is the better deal. After they learned how to write checks, deposit money, withdraw money, they took a trip to the bank and saw what, what a bank looks like. They went to Subway after learning, like for communication skills, like what talking with another person, how to order on their own pay with their own money. And of course, for my trip, for my lesson, we took a trip to Pat so they could buy all their groceries, all their ingredients so we can make our pizza. Life after high school. For 
many students that begin their junior or senior year, and it starts at this at the age of 16 with these students as well. And the transition process is started and based on the IEP of the student, and some alternative learning facilities could be either college, trade school, job, adult education, independent living, community participation, which actually a couple students in the life skills classroom do. They go out once a week to a job site and they get that, they get the job experience. One goes to a church to do dishes, one goes to the daycare down the street. So they do get the opportunities that are needed for, so they can be successful after high school. My personal favorite part of the whole capstone would have to be working on my product, going down there, getting my 15 hour internship, planning my lesson, writing my lesson, and of course, teaching my lesson. And I wanted to think of a lesson that, of course, fun, no one wants to do. I wanted everyone to be involved, and I wanted to incorporate previous lessons that they've done. So I wanted to tie in communication, tie in cooking skills, hand washing, stuff like that. Now, in order for me to get the full experience of seeing how Ms. Villardo teaches her students, I needed my 15-hour internship. And some, thing, some activities that I saw when I was down there was, of course, their unit price activity. They made cupcakes, they frosted cupcakes, baked cupcakes for their first day of spring party that they had. They learned how to write checks. They went one Friday afternoon, they went to Ms. Villardo's store and saw that when you pay with a check, it gets taken out of your, out of your, out of your account. So they saw that. They did the telephone activity, which I mentioned, and of course their cooking of eggs. Now for my lesson, I decided to teach them how to make pizza. So I had to make a PowerPoint that everyone would be able to understand and be able to be a part of. Uh, we took our trip to Paths to get all our ingredients, and we had to cook our pizza, of course. So for my lesson on pizza, like I said, I made a PowerPoint, and it included things such as the different types of crust that you can use, like pita bread, English muffins, bagels, the toppings like cheese, bacon, vegetables. And then our pizza recipe that we were going to use with directions on um, how it's going to be done, and I actually have a link of the online activity that they did in which they were able to sit in front of the computer and see how pizza is actually made, and I'm going to actually show you that. So they were like, make their pizza. use like I mentioned there's the pita bread the bagel all those and then and then there's the sauce the different toppings they can use so before we actually went in the kitchen they actually saw how it was done and this is actually just a glimpse of me teaching my lesson it's on um, our pizza recipe that we use along with the directions and there's little segments of me doing one on one with them on making it pizza. The Pillsbury biscuits, well we're going to use that same crust, yes, crust to make our pizza. Wait, 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 Make our pizza. We're going to use like tomato sauce, our toppings, which you all named your favorite toppings, and we're going to use shredded cheese. So our recipe and our direction to make 
our pizza is we have to preheat the oven to 400 degrees. We have to prepare the crust so like how we do we smash it on the table and head open. Um, we're going to spread the pizza sauce on the crust so after we put it on the cookie sheet, we're going to spread the sauce. We're going to add our toppings and the cheese. And we're going to bake for 20 minutes and we're going to enjoy. So I've made a little activity for you guys so you can all make your own pizzas. Do you have any questions for Jess before you start? Jess, can you just go back to the, um, what was that, what were the ingredients? For our pizza? Yeah. Excellent. That looks delicious. Do you guys like the way the biscuits taste? Do you remember eating the biscuits? Do you need them? Working in the life skills classroom. 
for one, I had to simplify the lesson so all the students would be able to understand. I know for us it's easy, like we know how to make pizza, but you have to simplify it even further because there's a lot of different things that could happen if not one student understands. We want to make sure every, like I said, everyone can get involved and and the reminders, like we know before we cook we have to wash our hands, we have to tell them. We know the stove is hot, but we have to tell them. So those little reminders and what I've learned through this whole process is it's hard to accommodate all students' needs and disabilities. Ms. Bologna made it seem so easy, but it's really not. And then, don't be afraid to accept help from the aides, especially. When I, present, when I taught my lesson, Ms. Bologna wasn't there. It was not. So, I was freaking out. I was like, oh, I have to do this all by myself. I've worked, I mean, yeah, I've worked with the students, but I never worked a, with them to a whole new level, like doing my own lesson. Like, I would help her with her lessons. But the aides, there's other people in there who are willing to help, and they know the students more than I do because they're with them every day. I just want to point out my favorite part of the whole capstone would be helping Ms. Millard. Like, once I got more familiar with the students, I was, in other words, like the other teacher. Like, I would do the one on one activities, I would, I would sit with a student and help them with their worksheets and teaching the students, like it was my time, like I saw how she did, now it's my turn, it was actually a lot of fun. I would just like to thank everyone for coming and watching my capstone, and I'd like to open the floor for any questions or comments. Hi Jess, I'm Hi. Mrs. DeCepel, I'm a teacher in town. Um, what are your future career goals? I actually am going to Nautic Valley for nursing, but I found, like one reason, like I'm in the CNA program here, mm -hmm. so I couldn't do something with nursing, so I was like, and I always found like students with disabilities like interesting, like a friend of mine has Asperger's, uh, my friend's little brother has Down syndrome, so I found that always interesting. And I've gone to a Special Olympic for like three years, so I always, like I said, I find that topic very interesting, so I wanted to dedicate my capstone to it and see how they learn and do activities in day-to-day -day life. That's awesome. You might end up in a hospital for special needs someday. That's great. Yes. Jessica, I'm Tom Zelli. I'm on the Board of Ed, and um, while you were presenting, I, I actually wrote down enthusiasm for the learning needs of special needs. And it, it comes through in your presentation so you. very nicely done. Any other questions? I yes. just have a comment as a special education teacher. I think it's wonderful that you wanted to work with our life skills students here and that you, as Mr. Bazzelli said, were so enthusiastic. I think you did a fantastic job. Thank you. Oh my gosh, this is so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, would you recommend it to anyone in this room? Would you recommend this process? I actually would recommend Capstone to the upcoming juniors. I mean, yeah, it's a long process, but at the end, like I'm showing up right now, it's all worth it in the end. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm.